The objective here is to read the OVO tutorial. I found this on a GitHub page. It says the Open Vulnerability and Assessment Language is an XML-based community standard for representing and exchanging security content. Its purpose is to enable the transfer of information across the entire spectrum of security tools and services. So our first question is just a general one, what is OVAL? And on one hand, the answer is it's a language, but then they go on to say it's a language that's representing security content. That way you can exchange this information better. And why do you want to do this exchange? Well, you want to feed that into a security tool to protect whatever it is you're protecting. Now, OVAL provides a standardized representation of the supporting data needed for the three main steps of the security assessment process. Before we even read those, I know I should recall that. So we have OVAL definitions for representing the expected state of an endpoint, then OVAL system characteristics for representing the actual state of the endpoint, and finally, OVAL results for reporting the outcome of the assessment. So if we put that in equation form, I wonder if it looks something like that. Now you can find more information about how OVAL supports the steps of the security assessment process by going to this link. And I'll put that link in the comments so you can just click it, maybe even make a video reading through this. This guide, though, addresses the development of OVAL definitions, often referred to as content creation. So an OVAL definition is the content. It contains the structure and components of an OVAL definition as well as provides an overview of the process for creating definitions. So I wonder how you create a definition. Well, we'll get an overview of that and learn about best practices. So that's the introduction to the tutorial. Um, last sentence, they just say they're also going to cover the resources, tools, and methods available for generating OVAL definitions. So maybe silly question, but let's get used to the terminology. We want to call these things definitions. But the question is, what are we generating with OVAL? So to cover the general concepts, OVAL definitions provide a means to specify what endpoint information should be checked and what corresponding values are expected to be found. In addition, an OVAL definition defines how to interpret the results of comparing the characteristics which were observed on an endpoint against what was expected. Okay, so it's a little repetitive here, but let's take a real good look at the diagram. We have ourselves. oh, if you start reading at the top, though, that looks backwards. I guess we have to go down here. So it says what to check, what's expected, and that happens two other times over here. Well, computer science people in their flow charts, they love them, don't they? So in figure one, a number of tests are defined in terms of what endpoint information should be checked and what information ex is expected to be found on the endpoint. Given these kinds of tests, an automated process can be performed which gathers the actual endpoint information and makes the comparison. So we like OVAL for automation. Now the components of an OVAL definition follow the same pattern as general concepts discussed above. So on that part that says what to check, that is an OVAL object. And then the part that says what's expected, this is what's called an oval state. So the third thing here, it says the oval test associates oval objects and oval states. Using that association, we can determine whether the observed equals what's expected. Finally, the oval criteria describes an assertion about an endpoint, which is used to determine whether the criteria is satisfied. The oval criteria defines a logical expression used to interpret the outcome of the comparisons specified by the oval tests. So the question is simply, what is used in an oval test? So let's blow this up again so we can see the diagram a little better. It says below documents the oval definition in greater detail. Rectangles in the figure represent properties of the definition, and the circular shapes represent other oval components with which a definition may be associated. The lines in the diagram represent the relationships among these components, and in addition, optional components in the diagram are marked with an asterisk. So an extend definition and then a state is our two optional ones here. So an oval definition includes metadata, which describes the purpose and the origin of the definition, and in addition to oval criteria. So I'm asking what three things are in the definition? You have purpose and origin and criteria. 
or at least these are not just the three things, but the three types of metadata. Now the oval criteria is one of the building blocks for assembling the assertion which the definition is designed to evaluate. The oval criteria and oval criterion are used together to create an illogical statement which references oval tests and other oval definitions. As noted, before an oval test associates oval objects and oval states to check specific information on the endpoint. They kind of repeat themselves here, but then they say each oval test provides a Boolean result used in evaluating the logical statement formed by the oval criterion, criteria and criterion. Starting with the metadata element in an oval definition conveys information about the definition. This includes the definition title, the operating systems and platforms the definition applies to, and a description of what the definition is checking for. Note that information in the metadata element, including platforms and products, does not affect evaluation of the definition. So here's platforms and products. This does not affect evaluation. So there's the metadata part. Let's get into that object. An oval object specifies which information should be collected from the endpoint for evaluation. And an oval object must provide sufficient entities for a user to uniquely identify the endpoint information to be collected. In the example below, the oval object specifies that a key in the Windows registry, which contains version information about an application called Coolware Eyebrows, should be collected from the endpoint. So let's break this down. We have our registry underscore object ID. This is called uh, oval tutorial object one version three. There's a comment here, which is kind of cool. And it basically says what we just read. Then there's a XAML namespace, so there's the essentially link you can go to to access the namespace. And now Hive, the Hive we're working with is HKey Local Machine. There's this key, and then the thing we're looking for, I presume, the version. Right, it says right here, the oval object specifies that a key in the Windows registry which contains version information about an application should be collected from the endpoint. Okay, let's get into the state now. So the oval state describes the expected values which are compared to the information collected from the endpoint being evaluated. And in the example below, the registry state specifies that information matching the value 1.0 is expected to be found in the registry. So you see the value right there. This is all inside of the registry state. So the oval test defines a relationship between the object and zero or more states, and it matches the definition of the endpoint information to be collected from the endpoint with the corresponding values expected to be found. So in the example registry test below, the oval object, oval tutorial object one, is associated with the oval state, oval tutorial state one. So that's how we set up our test right there. So the check and check existence attributes in the oval test are used to guide the comparison of endpoint values. The check existence attribute defines how many distinct groupings of information, as defined by the oval object, must exist on the endpoint for the oval test to evaluate to true. The check attribute defines how many of the collected values must satisfy the requirements given in the oval state for the oval test to evaluate to true, and in the example above, the check existence property indicates that at least one instance of the information identified by that object must be found on the endpoint. Thus you see it say at least one exists right there and that all values of the information specified by the oval tutorial state object, that must be checked against information found on the endpoint. I wonder if I misspoke there by calling it a state object. I should have maybe just said state, but I'm gonna keep it in the video so you either learn from my mistake or we all realize that semantics is not important. So the oval criteria defines a logical expression in an oval definition and may contain zero or more oval criterion and nested criteria. The oval criterion references oval tests and represents a term in the logical expression defined by the oval criteria. So in the example below, the oval criteria contains two oval criterion. Oh wow, and you literally write that in there. Or whoever you're getting your oval definition from wrote it in there. 
So to go over this, it says the first one checks whether the eyebrows thing is installed in the first place, and the second criterion checks whether coolware email is installed. So the logical expression defined by the oval criteria below checks whether both eyebrows and email are installed on the endpoint being evaluated. So we could keep the question pretty simple. How would we check if an application is installed? So notice the comment part, but right here is where we run the test to see if this particular thing is installed. So in addition to oval metadata and oval criteria, a definition also has a class, which indicates the category the definition falls into. And this helps to identify the definition's purpose. In oval, there are five kinds of definition classes. All right, so five classes, and that sounds about right for maybe a high school student or college student. You don't want to take more than five classes in one semester. And look at this. The first one might sound like a class you would take, or at least something you'd be learning. Compliance. Just kidding, my humor is awful. Um, okay, so our first class in an oval definition is compliance, and this checks whether an endpoint is compliant with a specific policy. Then we have inventory. This checks whether specific software is installed on the endpoint. Another class is miscellaneous. Oval definitions that do not fall into one of the other defined classes can go in here. Then we have the patch atoms class. Okay, just the patch. This checks whether a patch needs to be installed on an endpoint. So I'm assuming uh, that's a lot of uh, version stuff. You check to make sure the most recent version is there. And the last class is vulnerability. This checks whether an endpoint is vulnerable. So we have ourselves a definition below, and this has been constructed from some of the example components discussed above. So these components have been placed within a definition element, and note that this definition has a class of inventory, since it is checking to determine whether particular software is installed on the endpoint. So pretty much what we read before, but now it's being all put together. So the definition ID is Oval Tutorial Definition 123, we're looking for version 1, class inventory, or maybe we're not looking for version 1. This is version 1 of this oval definition. So to start with, here's our metadata. This is not anything being actually tested. Of course, the affected family is Windows, though. The description is pretty short and sweet. Coolware NetSuite is installed. That's the description of this definition. Again, what is a definition? It is a thing being tested on an endpoint. Now that all that's done though, we have these two criteria we talked about before where it's just seeing if these things are installed. Now oval variables provide the means to define a grouping of one or more values which may be referenced within other oval content. So I think it said it all there in the first few words. Variables provide the means to define a grouping. So what are variables used for would be a great question to check your understanding. They'll give us an example here. Consider the registry state below. It references a variable to define what values of a registry key to check for. In addition to specifying the oval variable, the oval state must also stipulate what data type and operation should be applied to the values provided by the oval variable. Oh, and maybe we have a typo right here. There's no end quote. Maybe you don't have to put an end quote though when you have the forward slash there. Well, anyways, the referenced oval variable is shown below, and it is composed of a list of product names. Through the variable, each of the product names is referenced by the oval state above. Okay, so you see that right there, variable 1, matches with this right here, next to constant variable id equals that. So that variable contains each of these strings. Now note that there are three kinds of variables in the oval language, and in this case, a constant variable which defines literal values is utilized. The oval language also provides local and external variables. So my question is what three types of variables do we have in oval? Constant, local, and external. So the oval set construct provides a way to express complex oval objects, which are the result of logically combining other oval objects. Does this question make sense? What do we call the combining of other oval objects? I think we're calling this the oval set. It's a set of objects. So they're gonna show us here an oval set created to combine two other objects using the union operator. I bet that's a smooth operator. So you see it right here in all caps. So to create the set, you're gonna have this object 
33 and, thir and 44. By unionizing these, you will be creating object 55. Or at least this object would be identifying all the files specified by... It says here both prior oval objects, so... All the files this identifies, all the files this identifies, they are combined when you are working with object 55 here. So now might be a great time to take a break. In the next video, I could call it part two, we'll go over filters.